What's the creepiest unsolved mystery? Happened during the football championship 2006 in Germany. A girl named Frauke Liebs was watching a game with friends and texting her roommates not to worry she would come home late. After leaving the pub at around 11 p.m. no one ever saw her alive again. Now the strange part. In the following week she texted and called a friend and her parents stating that she's alright and will come back soon, although with an unusual sleepy voice. At her last call she accidentally said yes when her sister was asking if she's been held against her will, and instantly correcting to a no. This was the last time someone heard of here. Her corpse was found in the woods close to where she disappeared three months later with no indication who her killer is. My favorite is probably John Lang's case. Basically, a local activist posts regularly about the Fresno Police Department and about how they were plotting against him. People thought he was crazy until he set up a camera that recorded lots of weird crap. Including a bunch of cops parking across the street from his house staring at him in the middle of the night, and a van pulling up with a large camera that people theorized took thermal pictures through walls to see if anyone was inside. He posted that that weekend, the police was going to murder him and accurately predicted his death. The police released a report saying that he was stabbed repeatedly in the back, and then recanted saying it was supposedly a suicide of a crazy man. Antoinette Cayadito's kidnapping. She let her kidnapper in after he said that he was Uncle Joe, where they threw her into a van. The creepy part is a year later, someone called 911 claiming to be her and someone shouts in the background, who said you could use the phone, and a struggle is heard before the call cuts off. Antoinette's mom said that she was sure it was her daughter's voice. Then four years later a girl matching Antoinette's description was acting strange in a diner, and left a note on a napkin that said, please help, call police. She's still missing and she went missing in 1986. Disappearance of the Sauter Children Christmas Eve 1945 The Sauter family home in Fayetteville, West Virginia burned to the ground. There's the father George, the mother Jenny, and nine children. Four of the children escaped, but five were believed to have died in the fire. Then, during the search of the burned house none of the children's remains were found. The fire was nowhere near hot enough to burn through bone, but not a trace of them were found. Here's the freaky stuff. Two months before, a visiting salesman told George's house would go up in smoke and your children are going to be destroyed. The salesman attributed this to George's dirty remarks against Mussolini. George, an Italian immigrant, had been outspoken against Mussolini, which angered some in his Italian-American community. Another visitor later told George that his fuse boxes would cause a fire someday. This was after George just had his electricity rewired and inspected to be safe. In the weeks before Christmas, the older Sauter children noticed a car following them through the main town as they walked home from school. During the night of the fire Jenny was awoken by a strange phone call after midnight, asking for a name she did not know. At 1 a.m. Jeannie heard a loud banging on the house's roof, but went back to sleep when she did not hear anything further. Half an hour later she smelled smoke. The fire seemed to start near the fuse box. George, Jenny, and four of the children who had been sleeping downstairs escaped the house. They yelled to the children upstairs but heard no response. The fire had already been engulfing the staircase so they could not rescue them. George tried to go outside around the house, to use a ladder to climb the window to the attic and rescue the children. But the ladder was not in its usual place. It would be found 75 feet away in an embankment. Then George tried to drive both his truck to the window, then climb them. But neither truck would start despite both having worked the previous day. Later, a telephone repairman told the Sodders that the house's phone line had not been burned through in the fire as they had initially thought, but cut by someone. The driver of a bus that passed through Fayetteville late Christmas Eve said he had seen some people throwing balls of fire at the house. Other witnesses claimed to have seen the children themselves. One woman who had been watching the fire from the road said she had seen some of them peering out of a passing car while the house was burning. Years later in the 60s, Jeannie found in the mail a letter addressed to her, postmarked in Central City, Kentucky with no return address. Inside was a picture of a young man around 30 with features strongly resembling Louis, who would have been in his 30s if he had survived. On the back was written, Louis Sauter I love brother Frankie Leal boys A90132 or 35. The Sauters never stopped believing their children were alive, and Jeannie wore black in mourning every day for the rest of her life. It gets even weirder. 
The initial report said the fire burned the kids' corpses entirely, but a person who worked on a crematorium said that, during a cremation they burned the bones for two hours after to fully cremate them, and the fire's temperature and the time the fire occurred weren't enough for it to happen. The salesman who visited the Sodder's house two months before the fire was also part of the coroner's jury, that stated about the fire completely burning the kids' corpses, and one of the firemen later retracted himself, saying he found a heart of one of the kids, that later was proved to be actually an ox liver. A Chinese girl was found in thousands of pieces in multiple bags on the street in 1996. The killer is still not found. My god this is horrific. Don't google it if you have a weak heart. The Setagaya family murders. The killer stayed in their house for a while after the murders as if nothing had happened. He allegedly made himself some tea, took a nap, used their computer for a bit and helped himself to some of their ice cream. I feel like someone who is that comfortable being in a house with people he just murdered has done it before, and will probably continue as long as they are not caught. Andrew Gosden Smart boy who had a perfect attendance record skipped school to go to a train station to buy a one-way ticket to King's Cross in London on his own. As soon as he leaves the station he seemingly vanishes in an area crawling with CCTV cameras. None of the CCTV cameras in the entirety of London had saved footage of him as the police waited two weeks before asking local businesses if there was any footage of him saved, and there's no evidence of him ever leaving the city. There are theories he was groomed or got snatched off the street but that's pretty much impossible to do in such a busy area. He had a PSP on him when he disappeared, but Sony confirmed no PSN account had ever been made on his account, he had no access to the internet at home and didn't even have a mobile phone. Strangely, he left the charger for the PSP at home suggesting he possibly intended to come back. Delphi Bridge Murders Two preteen girls were murdered near an abandoned train bridge in Indiana, 2017. One girl got audio and video of the suspect walking toward them. Two years later and Le is still taking tips from the public. Zeb Quinn. The guy goes missing, his car is found with a live puppy inside, headlights still on and a pair of lips drawn on the back window with lipstick. The Beaumont children deserves a mention. Three kids in Adelaide, South Australia who went down to the beach in 1966 and never came back. They were seen talking to a man and then walking around the suburb, but that's it. Never came home, never found, nobody ever arrested, police still following tips and digging for bodies more than 50 years later. Kids were like 9, 7 and 4. All three just vanished. Parents refused to move from the house for a very long time, in case they ever came home. Does my head in? The body in boiler stack 9. Basically, some maintenance workers found a well-cooked body in the stack of a boiler in the steam plant at a paper mill. Nobody knows who it was but there are signs that he died very slowly. He was found with his clothes off and wrapped around his feet and hands as if to protect himself from the searing hot metal. The theory is that he was exploring during the weekend when the boiler was off, got stuck, and was unable to alert anyone before they started the boilers back up the following week. The body had been in there for months by the time he was found. I read about this just last month and the thought of how long and slow your death would be as your skin slowly starts to peel, and knowing there's no way out and your screams for help go unheard terrifies me. Just what happened to MH370? A massive airliner en route from one heavily populated city to another suddenly hangs a hard left before quietly disappearing from radar. No distress signal, no emergency call, just gone. Only one piece of debris ever found, washed up on a beach thousands of miles away. What the hell happened? More than one piece of debris has been found now. It's pretty certain the plane went down in the sea. The Atlantic did a long read about this. The journalist, an aviation expert, believes the pilot committed suicide after killing everyone on board by depressurizing the cabin, taking one long flight into the Indian Ocean, and crashing the plane. A few years ago, two Dutch girls went traveling to North-Central America, Panama, and they went missing. The phone records were weird, they called 911 multiple times throughout the next few nights. Their camera was found with dozens of random photos taken in the middle of the night, as if they were trying to see using the flash. Then I think they found some body parts, a boot with a foot still inside and a pelvis bone or something. 
really creepy. I read up on this one a lot when it happened, I believe the consensus is that they got lost on a trail and tried crossing a rope bridge in the dark one of the girls slipped and fell and was badly injured or killed, the other took photos of where she had fallen and made a kind of map and also took photos of that, she tried to go for help but also must have fallen or died from starvation. Animals and rain are likely to blame for the body parts being as scattered as they were. It's a very sad tale and a hugely cautionary one, if you're going hiking and you don't know anything about the area, be very prepared and very careful. I've posted about this before elsewhere, but the Velisca Axe murders has got to be up there for me. Sometime around midnight between Sunday June 9th and Monday June 10th 1912, a person bludgeoned to death eight people sleeping, including two adults and six children aged 5 through 12. The Bodum Lake Murders In 1960 in Finland a group of four teenagers went camping near of Lake Bodum. Two girls both aged 15 and two guys both aged 18. At night three of them were killed and only one of the boys survived. Their bodies and the horribly injured boy were found a few hours before noon. The badly injured boy was laying on top of the bloody tent. If you search for pictures of the tent, you can see that it's completely drenched in blood. The boy was not fully conscious and had several fractures in his skull. He survived and is still alive today with no memory of what happened. The police tried everything to find out what happened. Later in 2005 the survivor was accused of being the murderer. I however do not believe this to be true. Some of the teen's possessions were taken, wallets, shoes etc. Some were later found in the forest 500 meters away. With the injuries he had, walking that distance would have been impossible. Also, why come back to the crime scene? There was also no way this boy could have caused himself injuries to the back of the head. Also, some things like the leather jacket from the boy that died still haven't been found. To search for the murder of the largest manhunt in Finland's history was conducted. 88 searched criminals were found in the forests of Espoo as a result, but not the murderer. There were multiple sightings of a light-haired man walking nearby the crime scene before and after the crime. He was never found. Edit. I forgot to tell how they were killed. Their heads were bashed and hit with a big rock slash steel rod. They were also stabbed through the tent fabric with a knife. The cause of death for the three were head injuries. One of the girls had been stabbed over 10 times. Didn't they keep finding pairs of hands and feet around Hollywood Hills a few years back? I never heard an update on that case. I know there's still shoes left with feet in them, washed on a shore in Canada. Really creepy since it already happened over 15 times. It's almost certain that it's the remains of people's bodies jumping to their deaths on a bridge nearby. Still creepy though. Okay, so maybe creepy to me at least. When I was five my dad didn't come to pick me up at the weekend as usual, my parents had been divorced for a few years but we're on relatively good terms and co-parenting by all accounts. The next day my mom took me round because I was upset and she was pissed off. No answer at the door but his car and work van were on the drive. She still had a key to the house so let us in to find everything in place. His wallet and keys on the kitchen table, dog in his bed. She fed the dog and went back home. After a couple of days still no contact so she went back round, everything was just as she found it last time, all belongings and clothes there, his bags and suitcase still in the cupboard, just a hungry dog. She took the dog back with her and spoke to his side of the family, no one had heard from him for about a week but nothing out of the ordinary. A mutual friend at his work said he hadn't been in for a week either and their boss was furious. She called the police and reported him missing. They found no clues, his wallet, keys and cars all at the house, his passport was in the drawer, his petty cash stash of about 500 pounds was where it was always kept. No signs of struggle, no signs of his bank accounts hadn't been touched for a week and no out of the ordinary or large transactions or withdrawals over the previous months. Long story short, they found nothing and eventually shelved the case, and 23 years later still no contact with any friends or family, his parents and brother have all since passed away never knowing what happened. Amy Bradley. She was on a cruise with her family when she went missing. They only have suppositions on when exactly she disappeared, but it was on the ship since the last sight of her was when the ship was en route to the Antilles. One of the theories is that she was sold to sexual slavery. But the details of her disappearance are really creepy. The fact she was taken in an enclosed space, and nobody saw or found anything is baffling. 
Also, the ship's crew were quite uncooperative first with the family and then the FBI, leading some people to think they had a kind of deal with a sex ring. Amy had told to her parents, the night prior her disappearance that she was creeped out by some cruise members who were insistent for her to go with them on shore in Curacao. I'm not sure about that but the fact is, her case is really sad. Some tourists have claimed to have seen her on the shore months later, malnourished and terrified with two men next to her. As of right now, it's been 21 years and she's still missing. I remember a story, sadly I don't recall any names but it was slash is quite a well-known story where a German dude disappeared. So, this guy is on vacation with his friends. One night he gets in a fight with some guys at a club. His friends assumed they were Russian but weren't sure, as they were really drunk. Dude goes outside to get some fresh air. His friends follow him, when he wasn't returning. They find him outside with a head injury. Apparently, the guys from the club returned with some friends to beat him up. The next day he visits a doctor and is diagnosed with a small ear injury. He isn't allowed to fly and get some medicine. He delays his fly home for a week or so, but not his friends. Now, this is where the story gets strange. For the next days this dude sends paranoid messages to his mother and friends. Telling them he feels weird that something is strange, and that he is watched and followed by someone. In one of his last messages, he asked his mother to Google the medicine the doctor gave him. On the day of his departure he was filmed and seen at the airport. He was approached by security, I don't know why, and brought into a room. Security later said, he was really nervous and always looking around as if he was expecting to be followed. Suddenly he went into a full panic and stormed out of the room, leaving his backpack and all his belongings behind. Security footage showed him running out of the airport across the street and into the open fields. That was the last anybody has seen of him. Sounds like psychosis caused by brain trauma if I had to guess. Concussions can cause all sorts of side effects like anxiety and depression. The Angie Cooney Lake Village Disappearance An entire village of Inuits just up and vanished. Upwards to 25 to 30 people disappeared, leaving behind burning fire pits, clothes with needles in them and rotten food on plates in the homes. There was no sign of struggles or a panic. People just disappeared. There's one from near me called, who put Bella in the witch elm. Some lads discovered the body of a woman hidden inside an elm, nobody knows who she was, but graffiti appeared saying, who put Bella in the witch elm, and it seems to appear every so often around the area with no one knowing who does it. The Dyatlov Pass Incident. Ten experienced hikers set out on an expedition in the Ural Mountains in the Soviet Union. Their trip is well documented, both with camera shots and writings because they were testing for an elite mountaineering instructing license. One member, Yuri Yudin has to turn back because of a flare-up of old health issues, he agrees to meet them in the town they were supposed to arrive at on February 12th. On February 20th, still no sign of them? Rescuers send out a party and find the following. The tent abandoned with all of their shoes in it. Keep in mind, this is a Russian winter and very experienced travelers. The tent appears to have a large slash on the back made from the inside, as if there had been something blocking the front of the tent. The nine bodies were scattered. Six appearing to have died of hypothermia, three from apparent physical trauma. One victim had a fractured skull two others had major chest trauma. According to the doctor who examined them, the force required to cause the damage sustained would have been extremely high, comparable to the force of a car crash. One of the victims, perhaps most disturbingly, was missing her tongue and eyes. None were wearing shoes. Two victims were dressed only in underwear. Again, I cannot stress to you enough how experienced these people are. One was a World War II vet with four medals, from a division with 80% fatality. It was a running joke in his division that you only got one to two medals, because then you either were unfit for duty or dead. And he had four. It was documented that some compelling force must have made the nine hikers flee their tents. No one knows what that force could have been. There are many intriguing theories, but all seem to have some bit of contradicting evidence making them seem implausible. Epstein's suicide. Feel like that isn't a mystery at all, dude had dirt on a lot of high-profile people. Black Dahlia 10,000%. Cut in half and completely drained of blood, left somewhere posed for maximum effect. It still gives me the heebs.
no matter how you look at it or what theory you subscribe to none really 100% fit, and even if you consider it solved by a theory someone still did this to that poor woman. Literally terrifying. Also as a warning, pretty grim pics pop up if you image search so be warned.